In this particular video right here guys, we are going to give you everything you need to know about technical analysis guys. So when we talk about technical analysis, I'll be diving in deeper in terms of price action, support and resistance, key areas where you have to enter trades, areas where you have to exit trades, and everything you need to know about price action. It's all in this video guys. We are currently giving away FSGO 2.0 course completely for free. Make sure you watch the first lesson which you posted right here, and secondly also watch the second lesson that we posted right here. And guys, remember, we're giving you all of this information completely for free. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity to greet you all and welcome you to yet another chapter that I'm about to start with right now. It's called an introduction to Forex trading strategies. The first question that is there is what is a Forex trading strategy for all of you guys? Who do not know or who does not know what is a forex trading strategy it's explained to you using the four following bullets the first one says a forex trading strategy is a set of rules and analysis that a forex trader uses to determine whether to buy or sell a currency pair at any given time the second bullet point it says forex trading strategies can be based on technical analysis charting tools or fundamental news based events so the main task of any forex trading strategy is to minimize the impact of external factors on a forex trader and to organize the traders activities there are probably as many forex trading strategies as there are traders but not all forex strategies are created equally so why is it important that you have your own forex trading strategy that is a question that i'm posing to you right now why is it so important why is it so essential why is it so crucial for one to actually have their own forex trading strategy so this is the answer to that question a strategy is a set of rules that is something that you must put in the back of your head that a strategy is a set of rules it helps a trader to avoid the destructive emotions during trading but only if that trader follows the strategy without deviations a strategy can be back tested on historical data so that you will have a proof that it really work so it's very much important that you always back test to check if your strategy is useful or it's not if it happens that you spot that your strategy is not working that means you must change that particular strategy that you are using at that time and moment a strategy reduces the time of the market analysis so when you have a strategy you reduce the time that you use when analyzing the market that means you know what is it that you are looking for at a market or from the market at that particular time and moment so as, as soon as the strategy provides a signal, a trader starts trading. When it doesn't, then the trader knows that he or she must not trade. So if a strategy provides a signal, it gives you an indication of when to enter. That's a time where you know that you should start trading. But if it doesn't, that's a time when you know that you must not trade, but you must just wait for a perfect set that is going to be accommodated by your strategy. It also helps a trader to be disciplined and to be more professional towards their trading. So if you have a strategy, you become more professional and be more disciplined with your whole entire Forex trading. So we're now going to do it. We're now going to be teaching you how to create your own strategy using the FX code approach. So the topic says learn to create your own strategy uh using the fx code approach of course because we are the fx codes we're going to be teaching you how did we embark on a journey of creating our own strategy so here are fx code steps that you can use to build your own strategy your own forex trading strategy so the first point is that ask yourself what kind of a forex trader you are it's very much important for a person to ask themselves what kind of a, a, a forex trader that i am because if you know that it's going to be much more easier for you to actually start up a good strategy that accommodates you as an individual uh, because we are all different so we all have different uh, ways of approaching the market so let me just uh give a question that's going to guide you to know what kind of a forex trader that you are so we have a scalper trader those are people who get in and get out from a trade in very uh, quickly like they do not waste time just get in a trade and get out then we have a day trader 
we have a medium term trader then we also have a long term trader so those are, are three different types or four different types uh, of traders that we have and secondly it's important for you to choose a time frame that you prefer trading on so we have what 30 minutes we have hourly we have daily we have weekly monthly etc so that is also going to be helping you to know whether you are a swing trader or a scalper trader so number three you have to decide which market condition you will focus on as you know there are three primary conditions uh, that are, are there in the market namely we have a trend we have a range and a breakout so each of these conditions exhibits its own market tone as a result a strategy that is good for trend trading can show the weak results when the market is in a range so that really makes sense over there so uh, continuing now for you to see uh, we're going to go to number four. Number four talks about you as a person. You must choose your tools. So you must ask yourself questions if you will use the technical indicators. And if so, which are those technical tools that you're going to be using or the technical indicators that you're going to be using? It's important to note that there are two types of strategies which Forex traders use. In most in instances, the one with indicators and the one without indicators so we have the strategies with indicators and strategies without indicators uh, but at fs codes we prefer strategies without indicators because we believe that indicators move after the market has moved not that the indicators move the market so if you prefer an indicator strategy there are various technical indicators available in metatrader 4 uh, which is the platform that platform uh, it will help you identify the market's movement no indicator strategy can include the analysis of candlestick patterns chart patterns trend lines or other elements of price actions as well as the news again okay, I think you had that let me try to read it again for you if you prefer an indicator strategy, there are various technical indicators available in MetaTrader platform, which will help you to identify the market's movement. No indicator strategies can include the analysis of candlesticks, patterns, the chart patterns, the trend lines, and other elements of price actions, as well as news trading. So number five is this point that is important for you to know as well. You need to be able to define the setup and the trigger of your, of your strategy so the setup are the required conditions and the trigger means the entry rule when do you enter and what are the most required conditions for you to enter so the setup is a favorable market condition significant but not sufficient for opening a trade it may refer to a particular location of candlesticks or indicators that you may apply to technical chart. The setup shows a, fa a favorable time for trading, but it does not point at the exact moment when you should start to enter a particular trade. So the setup may consist of one or more filters. Filters are designed to protect traders from receiving false trading signals. However, if you apply too many filters, you risk entirely missing trading signals. So a balance between a small and a large number of filters is necessary. The second important element is a trigger. As opposed to the setup, it is a technical signal that indicates the right moment for entering the market. Quite important to know your particular trigger to enter the market without any hesitation. So it can be candlesticks, the bar patterns, the indicators and the escalators the basic rule of trading is like this risk not more than one is to two percent of the deposit for one trade so number six uh you need to choose the exit rules make a rule for take profit and stop loss orders not only if there is an entry trigger but an exit trigger as well it is important when you understand that it is time to close your trade. Uh, 
the exit trigger is useful not only when you fail but even when you have a profitable trade because the market will not be on your side forever so write down the rules of your strategy it is important for you to journal down all the rules of your strategy and to channel your trades as well even if you are sure that you remember all the steps of your strategy it is important to write them down not to hesitate when it's time to trade so number eight uh which is the last point you need to test your strategy on a demo account make a good effort this will create a base for your success if there are mistakes you will be able to correct them without losing money so after you have tested your strategies on a demo account it is important that you then start using your strategy on a live account don't deviate away from the rules but keep learning and thinking about how to make your strategy even better so thank you very much ladies and gentlemen hi there everyone this is fs gojo mentors i want to welcome you guys to the main lesson of this entire course what we're going to be doing now we're going to be focusing on learning how to master your entry point meaning in this lesson guys you're going to be using pure price action in order to help you understand the mastery of entries now you're going to understand that when we cover this lesson we're going to start with the theory first and then later we're going to cover the practical side on how to actually enter your trades now without wasting any further time let's continue how to find good entry points you're gonna see that finding perfect entries is basically working on your entry points so we need to use lower time frames in order to find good entry points this is from one minute up to 30 minutes charts the reason we are using smaller time frames is because we need to actually see what the market is forming in its earliest forms. So this can actually help us a lot if you're going to be entering your trades. Secondly, focus on finding good entry points. This can help you find high probability setups. It requires analysis and waiting for a setup to form before you can actually enter your trade. Now, the best entry point also goes hand in hand with the time frame that suits your personality. Even though I did mention that we're going to be using one minute up to 30 minutes chat, there are going to be others who are going to be using time frames such as one hour up to four hours chat. One minute up to 30 minutes chat also goes hand in hand with your personality. It requires that you become more of a scalper than a swinger. So let me show you what I mean by that. As you can see here guys what we can have here is the market moving in this manner right i would say this market is moving like this in a more of a daily to four hour and one hour chart right so when the market moves in this manner a swing trader will be trying to take the trades from the top and the bottom as you guys can see so if i'm a swinger i'm going to be entering trades around these levels as you can see, I'm hoping to take the entire trade as I am looking at the swing perspective. You can see that a swing trader is in a way taking less trades than a scalper because a scalper will take this trade and trades inside as well. That's a scalp trader. You're going to take trades and a lot of trades inside. You don't look at just the swing, but you're also looking at maximizing those small trades. So the difference between a swinger and a scalper is also the trades they take. A scalper takes more trades than a swinger. As, as a swinger, you're going to need to be as patient as you can possibly be. Now, let's continue with the lesson. Market structures, trends, and zones. In our course, you will learn about market structures, trends, and zones. Those are the three tools you need to master entries using price action. Market structure lessons will be covered in detail on FS Gold Advanced New Market Strategy videos. Now, trends. You're going to see that, guys, in order to make good market predictions, you need to outline three types of trends that you need to know. We have an uptrend, we have a downtrend, and we have a sideways trend. This includes understanding support and resistance levels 
of which I already covered in the technical lesson part one. Now, in order to find good entries, it is best to trade with trends. In order to find good entries, it is best to trade with trends. To effectively use trends for entries, you must learn how to integrate zones, trends, and significant levels. You're going to see that we're going to help you guys in order to understand the difference between each and how to actually integrate all these three tools. The lesson on how to use and identify trends is already covered in technical lesson part one. Now, you're going to learn on how to use zones and significant levels in order to find good entry points. Significant levels and zones. In order to find significant levels, we are going to use the FS Gold high and low strategy. Secondly, FS Gold zone strategy, you need to learn on how to identify the difference between buy zones and sell zones. Key points, the end or break of an uptrending support is the beginning of a new resistance or vice versa. Let me explain what I mean by this. So what I mean by that is if the market here is acting as a support structure, as you can see at this level here, the market has a very strong support. So if you have a support structure and the market breaks below a support, it will then become a resistance because now the market will be resisting that level i hope you guys can understand vice versa is also true if the market is resisting at this level we can see that the market is resisting at its current level should it break that the resistance will then become a support this can help you a lot in order for you to understand how the zones strategy work so let me show you how the zones strategy actually works so as you can see here guys we basically have two different types of zones at this time and moment you can see that the market is buying at this point it's hitting the top and the bottom the top and the bottom the top and the bottom the market is basically ranging inside these tools so as you can see here guys the market here is acting more of a support structure we might call this level a level of support as you can see here guys the market is failing to push below which becomes our support this is of course an up trending support the market is failing to break below this support so the market break here we're going to expect a reversal and a push towards the downside equally opposite should the market fail to push above this structure it's going to be acting as a down trending resistance right to the cross it's going to act more of a support and expecting a push up as you can see if we're still in here this is known as a buy zone and this is known as a sell zone we break outside the sell zone we're gonna look for a buy we break outside a buy zone we're gonna look for sells now remember a powerful forex trading strategy doesn't have to be a complex one keep it simple and follow all its rules so guys now let me give you a bonus strategy that you're gonna be using as well this strategy also goes hand in hand with understanding zones so as you guys can see we've explained zones for you we know that when the market is still pushing up here we are inside a buy zone we are failing to break outside this support structure should you break the support structure it will become a resistance right we are still in the buy zone the market is still buying so now when we cross outside this structure we expect the market to retest before we look for a sell towards the downside so the market is breaking outside the support it will then become a resistance as you can see and it's putting a push towards the downside so now a trick that i want to share with you guys should the market break and show you confirmation of the market breaking you can expect the drop to be as low as where the market actually started so you're gonna see guys this is also one of the market tricks that we use for us to actually continue with a break of a trend once the market breaks we're actually gonna expect the market to push below so as you can see guys these are some of the tricks that you're going to be using kindly always make sure that you stick to your trading rules and don't let the market play you you're going to see that most of the time guys the market will give you a perfect entry let's say for example you can see that the market is forming and it's giving you some sort of a nice entry here so what the market does and how it likes to operate is that you're going to see that at this time and moment you're going to be expecting the market to give you some formation and we're seeing a break towards the upside the market has now given you a perfect entry and you're seeing opportunities of actually pushing towards the upside 
when you see these opportunities form when you see the market giving you an entry point you must know that once you see it you must be patient because now the market will test you and will test your ability of trusting in your own setup the market can even get like this the market can push down push up push down push up give you some volatility until it actually pushes towards your direction as you can see the time it took to complete the setup was not as you have exactly predicted you cannot predict on how fast the market will move as that would depend on volatility the only thing you need to understand is being able to actually get the direction of the market the only time we actually analyze is trying to understand the direction of the market and you're going to see that most of the time your biggest drawdown will become one of your biggest wins meaning that let's say for example i am looking at a buy trend and we're trying to go for sellers and the market is still pushing up and down pushing up and down pushing up and down pushing up and down and it breaks below we're looking for sales we're looking for the market to actually reverse so the market can give you a reversal of a sell and still push up to test to actually trade other traders to actually see how long are you going to stick to your decision and so it actually continues with your sell towards your downside remember if you enter your sales here this is going to be in a loss you're going to see sometimes one of your biggest losses will become one of your biggest wins it mostly happens in the forex industry as the market also trades traders you're going to see that as long as you've seen your entry you need to be able to trust in your analysis and stick to the market moves so now let's continue with the lesson what makes finding good entries difficult you're going to see that the only thing that makes entries difficult is manipulations right manipulations comes in different forms we have fake outs we have traps we have stop loss hunts and volatile market consolidation you can understand how to spot all these things in the market once you continue with the lesson now different market conditions we're going to have choppy market this refers to a market condition where prices swing up and down either in short term or for an extended period of time a choppy market is often associated with the rectangle chart patterns or volatile periods where a trend is not present or the trend is difficult to trade i'm going to show you guys examples of a choppy market but mostly a choppy market is when the market sells at a support and buys at a resistance you're going to see once you go to the chart you're going to be able to see this even clearly but before you even go there i need you guys to actually understand what i am talking about here so you're going to see guys during choppy weeks you're going to see that you're going to be at a support expecting a buy the market will be selling when you get to a resistance and expecting a sell the market will be buying this is just a choppy market the market is spiking up and down it's known as a form of manipulations the opposite is also true when you're expecting the market to actually resist it's going to push up when you're expecting the market to actually support it's going to push below you're going to see the market is not respecting any setup it's going to basically do whatever it wants to do and there's no any clear indication of what the market is trying to achieve that is just only when the market is trying to actually make other traders lose a lot of money so when you see that you're in a choppy week try to avoid trading as there's time to trade and there's time not to trade now trending markets when you're looking at a trending market this refers to a market that respects normal market setups and trend setups this is the kind of market that we are all looking for we usually trade trending market so as we showed you guys we're going to be using trends and trends most often so meaning that we are the type of people who actually trade a lot of trends it can be small trends it can be big trends and it can be long trends as well it can be trends and trends guys this is what we usually trade right so i'm going to show you also in market moves you're going to see that usually you're going to be trading that kind of things kind of trends and trends and so on and so forth you can see guys this kind of market consolidation actually work a lot if the market is of course in a trending market so that's how we get to benefit if we're going to be trading in trends in trends so you're going to see that the market will be respecting our setups and you're going to be making most of the money when the market is in a trending week these are just examples of how the market moves and how we use this trend in order to achieve high probability trading setups right we need to find these trading setups in order to actually have a high winning streak so now how to avoid losing because of manipulations and different market conditions manipulations is when the market takes you out of a trade due to manipulations 
stop trading and only wait once the market settles down as i told you guys there is time to trade and this time not to trade chop your markets we have already talked about how to define a trend so by now you should have no trouble deciding if there's an uptrend downtrend or no trend so what you can do when you're confronted with the choppy market you must make sure that you actually avoid trading for that week don't trade there's no need to force a trade if you don't have a good chance of winning so if you can fight the edge of trading then trade on a demo account until the market is back to its normal trading conditions and b please pay attention that you must have patience when you're in a trade by placing a stop loss or a take profit so now guys how to win using fs gold strategies start trading on a demo account to identify which of the fs gold strategies works best for you due to different personalities and risk appetite your trading style might differ from other traders however you have to take more than a hundred to a thousand trades in order to effectively diagnose your trading style of your system you have to continue trading using each of our strategies until your edge actually kicks in meaning that you can say that no strategy works for you whereas you haven't even tried in order for you to know which strategy works you need to put in all the efforts and you need to also try more than a hundred times in order for you to understand which one works best for you now when your edge kicks in you'll find that you have a good trading system that works sometimes make sure that you don't give up on it instead identify the forex market types it performs well in and only trade those so when it works sometimes it means it's working in a certain market conditions it could be working in trading markets or your strategy can also be working in a choppy market that's when you're trading against the trend so in order for you to trade against the trend you need to trade against the trend in a choppy week but in a trading week you need to trade with the trend you need to build a toolkit of fs go strategies that performs well in different market conditions like i said if you're going to be trading against the market you're going to need to trade that in a choppy week and if you're going to be trading with trends with the market you need to trend within a trending week so basically you need to use your toolkits or strategies as appropriate and depending on the market type that you're in also know that guys if you're a beginner or intermediate trader don't force to learn all strategies at once rather use this approach make rules for the strategies that you choose to use so that if you want to trade only trade one market conditions it works better in so you need to know which market condition you want to trade in you want to trade you want to trade choppy weeks or you want to trade trending weeks find good setups enter trades and wait to see how the market plays out so now guys we have covered the theory of what we're actually going to cover in the next practical lesson i hope you guys are ready stay tuned as we actually approach the market in a more practical side welcome to the practical side of master of entries part one so what we need to look at first is the time frames that we are going to look into as you guys can see here we have our one minute time frame here we have our five minutes time frame here we have our 15 we have our 30 one hour time frame two hour four hour daily so on and so forth so right now currently we are looking at xau usd as you can see guys we are going to be analyzing this and spotting trends and traps in order to help you guys see how we actually get to have our entry points how to spot when to trade and when not to trade we're going to be covering such that we've been discussing training weeks choppy weeks manipulations so on and so forth so first things first you can see that the market doesn't give us much here so that you know that how to enter your trades now let's see in terms of how to actually continue where we are currently as you can see if i will try to analyze i'll try to go to daily charts and see what the market is doing you can see that the market is giving me some form of a clear strong rejection here so i don't have a lot to do i can just basically come here and make this as a form of resistance the market is not giving me much to use so i'm going to wait for you to give me more details in order for me to continue so i can go to 15 minutes charts and see what the market is doing clearly i can see if i go in here that the market is of course trying to push above so i can come here and do for myself some sort of a resistance zone you can see here the market is trying to resist so i can mark this as my zone and wait it out and see what more i can do in this point i can go to five minutes as well and see what the market is doing 
I'm seeing that there's possibilities of a trend, right? You can take trends in the five minutes as well. So how I like to do trends and how I like to advise you as an entry trigger is to have your trends doubled like this, where there's most touches and basically be able to predict the possibility of trend. The trend might not work, but I want you guys to actually start practicing this manner of approach. The ability to actually to use trends for entries will be one of the most powerful tools you need as a trader. Now we're going to wait it out and see how the market plays out. All right, you can see that the market is breaking below this trend. Should it break, we need to let it continue and see how far it can continue with this trend. All right, currently we're getting some information here. You can see that we can actually form a trend with the information that we're getting here. You can see now we can form a more stronger trend. You can see that the trend that is represented by itself here will be like so. I'm gonna take touches from below and now come and rectify this. But you must start to continue. Don't try to be perfect and you can let the strategy be as simple as it can possibly be. So now, since our trend is forming, the break to each side will form our direction, meaning that should the market break above, we're going to continue with the continuations to the top. Should it break below, we're going to look for continuations to the bottom. So let's see how the market plays out. Looks like the market broke below as you can see the further push towards the downside so you have to know that guys usually when the market breaks below it can continue towards the bottom like so but there's a trick to that you can see here we have some sort of support so meaning that when the market actually breaks out below and finishes the break we expect some reversals let me actually go into a more practical side and actually show you what I mean by that. Let's say for example, we have some sort of a bullish pattern. The market is pushing above like so. The market is in a bullish trend and it breaks below. Retest. Because the market started here, or you look at the previous resistance from behind, you're gonna see that it could be from behind. After it actually breaks out of this trend, we expect some sort of reversals. Whenever the market actually breaks out, and pushes below we're going to look at the start of the trend or the previous resistance from the market to actually look at some sort of reversals this strategy usually works even though you can continue with the breakout you can also look for a, a right angle triangle reversal it can exactly be a right angle triangle or it could be lower than that before seeing some reversal patterns that's just some of the tricks that you might use once you are a trader so at this point i might expect some reversals but we're going to see how the market plays out from here As you guys can see, the market is reversing quite nicely. So now what we can do is we can go back to at least an hour chart and get to see what the market is doing and see what kind of formations we can do. We can see that this one already uh, did not take place. So we can remove that and the market has already took part here. We can remove these things from our chart, right? We need to have our chart as clean as possible so we can see what to expect. So you have to know that guys, with trends, you have to try. Now I'm, I'm going to try and see what I can do. So what you need to learn about trends, guys, is that even though they're not going to always help you actually giving you 100% trade, but you need to put them on and only enter the ones that you are confident in. But you need to practice trends. You need to practice the ability to predict the next price, right? Because you're going to see that with every strategy that you're going to use, your only possibility your only edge is the ability to predict the next price movement so practice that and your edge will start to kick in now let's see what the market gives us 
in order for us to continue so now let me go to at least 30 minutes charts and see how the market is gonna play out all right you can see that the market is respecting this setup here i can see this resistance is strong and i can see that i can also adjust my trend as well I can adjust this trend and see how the market plays out however if the market is playing at a resistance like this possibilities are we are in a choppy week you can see that there is no actually clear direction the market is just playing around so let's see what more can give us now i'm just gonna let this one like this maybe you might change it later but let's see how the market is doing before we can actually continue at this time moment the market might push above or play around this level let's just see how that actually plays out so you guys can see what i'm seeing here is possibilities of a new trend forming however the market is not spiking up or down it's basically trying to form some sort of a rectangle this is known as some of the choppy weeks movement the market is not pushing up or below it's just consolidating it's what we call a market consolidation it's just part of manipulations that you're going to be able to understand that you only enter once it's done you're going to wait until it breaks above or below any possible trends that you're going to form you're going to wait for the consolidation to end before you can continue with some volatility towards that certain direction so i hope i don't confuse you guys let's just continue maybe i can explain after the market played out what i meant by that this is the kind of trends that are hard to trade right this kind of trends we can actually call them manipulations right this kind of trends are the trends that are hard to trade try not to trade these trends because these trends are only there to help us spot the next direction we use these trends to actually spot what the market can do so what i'm trying to teach you here guys is your ability to understand how the market moves the market moves in a way that you need to understand price we use these tools in order to know what the market can do next when i see these things forming i know this is a trend that's not supposed to be traded these moves are just too small for you to actually profit a lot so you're going to wait for the big moves like this kind of moves you know for you to profit from a trade Okay, what I'm seeing here is the market is trying to break above. The market is trying to break above this consolidation trend. What we can do is to also try to modify our trend. Right? If I go to one of our chart, I can see that a nice trend is forming there. And if we trade with trends, you need to know that your trends needs to be updated to see the next possibilities. Right now, let me see if the market can be favorable or not. So if I'm going to be updating my trend at the bottom, I also need to update my trend at the top. So I'm going to just put it like so and let it be in this manner. Let's see what more can the market give us. Also bear in mind that is a very strong level. The market is struggling here. You can see how high the market is struggling at this level, guys. You can all see that. So it is also a nice level that we need to pay attention to. So I can go to 30 minutes charts and continue with the market movements and see how it plays out. As you can see guys, this was easy to spot. The trend just formed for me a nice buy momentum, right? I can see that this is a nice strong push towards upside, but we also need to know where to exit. So for that, I can go to one hour chart and see the next possibilities. So guys, remember I told you guys, we're also gonna be using FX gold high and low strategy. So we need to spot levels where the market might reverse. These are such levels that we need to be careful of. You can see this is the market levels that we need to be careful about these are market levels that we need to know we can see we've crossed above this level and we're approaching that level right so there's a difference between uh levels and support and resistance that lesson will be covered more in depth in the next following lessons for now what you can understand is that 
we're going to use support and resistance to actually cover zones as zones cover the ability to understand that there could be possible reversals here and levels is levels where we see as key market areas these are key chart levels i can see here this is a key chart level it's not more of a zone but a chart level right zones is where i'm expecting the market to actually not do a simple reversal right it's more of a zone than a level you can see here it's more of a level here it's more of a zone however we're going to cover that more in depth in master of entries part two so now let's continue the market and see what we can do at the moment i'm expecting the market to actually hit here and see if we can complete our chart movement i can see we have our uptrend here let's see how the market actually plays out I'm going to go through the charts and let's see what more gain the market gives us. Okay, we can see that here, guys. That formation of ours actually took place. If it was a trade you're going to take, you would have seen that here we had some sort of an uptrending support. Hope you guys can see. Uh, unfortunately this is a trade that i didn't catch however it's also a nice lesson that i want to give to you guys i'm gonna now start taking trades from this point i was just analyzing and seeing how this one actually operates and it respects the strategies that we give you guys what did i tell you before once the market breaks outside an uptrending support we're gonna expect a breakout after more of a reversal right i said after We've seen that right angle triangle strategy. We're gonna expect some sort of reversals. As you guys can see, the reversals are already took place, but you can see how effective the strategy is, and you can use it from five minutes as chart. You see, I told you guys for entries you can use five minutes or one minute. Even for five minutes, you can see you could have seen it more clearly. It's only a pity I missed this trade. However, those who could enter, those who already knew how to apply the strategy, would have caught this trade easily. Quite nice. You can see. This is also a nice trade to spot. After this trade, we're expecting a reversal. So now let's go to the minute charts and see what else can the market do and how to profit from the market. Okay, guys, coming here, what I can say is after this right angle triangle and the market is failing to push above, I'm going to let it play out until you can continue. You don't have to always trade. You only want to take trades that you see. At this moment, the only trace that I saw is this trade. Also, this one, you could have seen it if you're going to go deeper as to one minute or five minutes chart. But you don't have to trade every time. As you can see, you can have a trading instrument that you look into, but you don't have to trade every single move. If it doesn't give you an entry point, you don't have to trade for example for analysis levels i can see that the market can actually drop here can push below it can touch the top here before expecting some pushes towards the downside however seeing an analysis and an entry is two different things if you've seen analysis that you want to play in a certain manner you don't have to enter all the time you just have to wait it out and wait for an entry that you would take so don't force entries upon the market you have to wait it out until you find an entry you're going to be confident into when you enter. As you can see here, we hit the bottom here. So let's see how the market continues. Okay, first level here, I'm seeing the market breaking outside the structure. So I'm going to see... I expect some sort of reversal, either a retest and a push below. Once we are outside this trend, I want to see what more can the market do. Just trying to actually adjust and see if this can be sort of a retest and a push below or what it can be from this level. Now, for now, I can see that we are outside this bullish trend. We're in this bullish trend, but we've pushed below even the lowest point. So let's see how that one actually plays out as you guys can see this is forming for us some sort of confirmation that the market might push below so this is more of a, of a chance for you to know that the market might be pushing towards the downside guys the market might be pushing below 
possibilities are there. I'm looking for the market to push below. It is outside this trend and expecting the market to actually push below from this point. Let's see how the market actually plays out from here. We are back again guys you can see that the market is consolidating even though you might enter the sell you're gonna see sometimes the market might make you wait the longest right the market actually make you wait you can see that it's failing to push below you can go to as little as 15 minute charts and see what else we can see we can see that the market here is forming a bit of a trend so we're gonna wait it out and see how else to profit from this we can actually profit from this but when the market consolidate it's usually a confirmation that something major might come. Something major might come. You can see here the market is in some sort of a consolidation you can see a consolidation is also a bit hard to profit because the market is consolidating as you guys can see the market is actually consolidating in here it's been pushing up and low up and low up and low and you can see that it's consolidating and the break below will indicate a push towards the downside and the push above will of course indicate a push towards the upside now at this moment i'm seeing this is still being valid because we're still under this strong resistance here we can see here at this moment that the market is actually forming a trend so this for me is indicating that the market might have reached the low so if i enter a sell here i would exit at this level here because this is also a level we can pay attention to as you guys can see from here this is a nice level you can pay attention to and this one is always a nice level we can pay attention to so this one is deemed invalid we're going to continue with this guys and see how many trades we can actually check and from now i'm going to be spotting where i'm going to enter and where i'm gonna exit and see if we're gonna be taking more wins or losses but firstly i'll just show you guys how the market moves and how your analysis can actually make you wait now we're gonna go deeper into actually entering trades so at this time moment i can see that the market might be forming for me some sort of a trend here so let's see how that trend actually plays out so i'm gonna tell you where i enter and where i choose not to enter I'm gonna go to 15 minutes charts and see how else I can profit from this. I can see that the market here is hitting a resistance. So for me, I'm waiting for a market to push below and see if I can catch the sell towards the slow or a push towards the upside. For me, I'm just looking at the candlesticks and I wanna go for my sell. So this is my sell trade. Let's see how it plays out. If I lose it, it's gonna be my first loss. If I win, it's gonna be my first win. I'm gonna keep track as well. Let me just put it here for safety reasons. My profit is higher than my stop loss. Let's see how it plays out. Oh, it actually took me out and then short below. This is known as manipulations. As you can see, the market can actually stop loss hunt when it gives you a nice setup. 
anyway what we can look this at is the market actually took two decisions right we can see that we're in a consolidation that's point one and then outside this trend this can be seen as a retest push up and reversal of which in a way it was not actually a good trade to take depending on whether you actually check your fundamentals so you have to also make sure that you look into news a fundamentals clause is going to be open and well in our course so make sure you check that out as well so at this point you guys don't be stressed when you see this even though it could have went against you or you could have went in your favor you could have still hit my tp however because it's manipulations you don't take it personally you took a first loss this is our first losing trade let's see how else we can continue with the market right we took our loss now let's see what else we can do i'm teaching you guys the real trading this is the real things that happen in the market don't expect trading to be an easy road expect it to be challenging at some point however you're gonna see that when you actually trade a certain pair and get to understand how it operates you're gonna get to profit more so now let's continue and see how we can continue from here on forward So what I need to do now, I can go to the daily charts or one hour chart and see what else is the market giving me. I'm going to go to one hour chart and get to analyze what is the market telling me and how to continue from this point on forth. At this time moment guys what i'm seeing here is possibilities of the market pushing above right you can see here we're in a bullish trend but now we're gonna wait and see if we can push above so from this point here you can see that the market is pushing above this level so i'm gonna take this as a buy trade right you have to know that even though the market might be difficult to trade you can respect the market but you don't need to fear the market remember guys you can respect but for respect you don't have to fear you respect but you don't fear the market always remember that looks like this is our winning trade guys let me just adjust this correctly as you can see we had to wait out the market for this long so now we took a profit guys you can see the loss is small the profit is bigger and the market was consolidating a lot at some point there i thought we might hit a stop loss however we even even reached our stop zone this is our stop zone this is our exit level and we profited from this trade you can see that even though you might respect the market it doesn't mean you have to fear it the market can do such moves right this is just a learning curve when the market takes you out with a loss it just helping you to get to be able to be confident enough to continue so now we have one win and we have one loss let's see what more we can do so at this point guys i'm seeing some sort of a resistance here i don't know if you guys can see that this can be seen as some sort of a resistance here however uh, i don't have enough data how but i can use this as some sort of resistance of some sort so i don't know how i can place this you can see that guys analyzing has to be some sort of a task but for now those are possibilities i'm going to remove this for now and see if the market can actually give me more information before i can actually continue so now let's see any form of entry forming before we can actually enter right you can see here it was a push above this structure and we went for a continuation towards the upside of course we are out of this trade as you guys know out of a trade which means the market to actually push above so now i'm coming back here now i'm trying to analyze what else is the market doing you can see here 
we have some sort of an uptrend, right? I'll try not to remove the analysis from the past just to have a clear view of what happened. But at this point, the market is giving us some information to use. We're getting some data and we get some data. We're getting some possibilities of trades as well. So let's see if the market can respect our setup, right? Since these are possibilities, let's see how the market plays out. We are breaking below guys. We are breaking below. If you look closely here, we are breaking below guys. We are breaking below. The market can still try to stop loss hunt. So if you see a market condition for me like this, you can take a trade. So I'm going to take my trade guys. The market is breaking below. I want to go for sell here. I expect the bigger sell as this trend is a lot bigger. And I want to expect my stop loss to be a bit bigger as well because I want to be flexible with the market. Let's see how it plays out. Take profit guys this is our second trade and we are out with the win obviously i tried to push my stop loss a bit higher because the possibility is where the market can still push to actually try to retest this level here right possibilities where there that the market can come to retest this level so i'm trying to push above to see that if it comes here it's going to obviously be a push a normal push towards the upside guys the reason i wanted to push it above there is if the market actually where able to reach this level is going to be a buy it's going to be a continuation of this buy trend however if it's still going to reverse here i will still say it can be a sell and a stop loss hunt of some sort but if it reaches this level it was going to be a buy but i went for a sell and we are now in profits this was first loss this were our take profit so as you can see guys possibilities were there uh we can see that this was forming some sort of a nice trend and trends are very important to find guys trends are very important to find we see this does not take place now we're going to wait it out and see how the market continues from this point on forth and see what else we can do to get to profit from the market the market has continued to push below uh let's go to 30 minutes charts let's push it to this level and get to see what else we can do go to as little as 15 minutes chat and see what else is the market doing it's so one hour i'm seeing that it does not give me a lot of information however you can see that the market is trying to move you can see that this bit of a trend is formulating for us a push towards the downside we are as well at a resistance that is rejecting here so should you cross below i'm gonna look for a further push towards the downside and if it crosses above i'm gonna look for a further push towards the upside so what i can do is try to do some sort of a trend here i hope having all this green stuff on my screen doesn't actually disturb you guys but i'm just trying to give you a real trading experience i'm just trying to give you a real trading experience this is just a practicality guys it's not meant to actually entertain you it's for you to understand how the market operates and how trading is like those who trade smaller time frames guys let's say 15 minutes, five minutes charts you can profit from such things you can profit from such trends because it looks like this trading instrument does respect the trends you can profit from here to here from here to there as you guys can see so me I like to go there in this chat and see how it continues from this point on forth. As you can see, guys, it's still respecting trends and trends. I'm just gonna adjust this a bit because I told you guys uh, we use this to actually spot strong trends, right? So you can see there was a strong trend. Let's see what else is the market doing. It's respecting our trend. However, it's showing us that it's trying to consolidate more towards this level. So let's see what else is the market going to do. So at this point, guys, you can see that the market is actually consolidating. This can be seen as a push consolidation and a continuation or a push consolidation and a push above. However, what we can do is wait it out. Let's see what else can the market give us i 
okay you can see guys the market is trying to push below the market is trying to push below we do have a trend here we do have a trend here you can see our trend but the market is pushing below guys you can see the consolidation is towards the bottom let's see how further the market plays out okay for me guys this is more of a consolidation now if i were to enter a trade here i need to know also where to exit so i'm gonna have two possibilities usually when i like to do a trend i like to complete the trend so the trend has two possibilities for me let me see um this is the top this might be the bottom right or i don't like to usually use one spike so i'm gonna look for a place where it has more spikes guys this is just possibilities just want to see if i can put this here as well right because we have a very strong resistance here i don't think if we're gonna have a sell the market can cross below this one i'm not sure but possibilities are there if it crosses below or something like that then go that and if it pushes above we have our top there so we need to have a bottom and our top you can see this is our top and this can be seen as our bottom so what i can do for now is change the colors to red and a bit thicker and this one as well you can make it red so at this time moment what i see is the market consolidating i want it to break below to know that i go i'm going below i want it to break above to know if i'm going at the top so now let's see what can the market give us it's breaking below guys it's breaking below uh, i'm gonna take my sell trade should it cross above for me it's gonna confirm a push towards the upside so i'm gonna have my stop loss where i deem my analysis incorrect right my stop loss doesn't actually cater for how much i'm gonna lose but where i'm gonna be incorrect if the market crosses this level here for me it's gonna form a buy if it crosses this level so that's where my stop loss is going to be and my take profit will be nearly around this level so let's see how that actually plays out okay looks like we are in our stop loss region i might take a loss guys the market might be reversing as it's respecting the trends here i might have entered too quickly but we're gonna see almost took me out almost took me out a few seconds let's see what happens might be a bad trade but at this point i'm rethinking my trade possibilities are this is a break outside and a push above i'm rethinking my trade guys i'm rethinking my trade i can close in losses or let it hit stop loss or i can i can wait it out and see what the market further decides the market is the king we cannot force direction let's see how the market plays out it took me out guys it took me out i took a loss i took a loss guys we have one win we have two wins we have two losses so let's continue and see how the market plays out what did i say should the market across above this level we are gonna see a push towards the upside that is true you see i don't have to be in this trade i don't have to hold the losses for long to know that this wasn't gonna work so should i cross above here we expected what we, we expected a push towards the upside as you guys can see the market actually pushed above and at this time moment we're gonna see how else the market actually continues
okay now how we're looking at this you can see that we hit the top one two three so i'm going to look for some push towards the downside that are going to be present in this in this manner possibilities are there you just have to wait it out and see how the market actually plays out so for me i can have a pending order meaning that once it reaches level the order will open It'll only open when i hit here so if that hits i'm gonna expect the push towards the upside towards this level more or less right this was my loss you can see my take profit always bigger than my losses so this is my loss this is my loss however my profits are bigger so in overall i'm also like still in profits so we'll see how that plays out so i'm gonna put my stop loss a bit higher because should we reach here it'll be wrong because it's high and low i'm gonna stretch it a bit and see how that plays out so now let's put it out and see what the market can do did it open my trade looks like it opened my trade it took me out once again bad trade not a good day not a good week <laughs> not a good week guys but do we lose hope we don't we don't lose hope we continue this is a nice possible trend that we can see here the market is just respecting that trend guys and my stop was open quickly so i'm now in losses because my losses are becoming bigger let me just adjust this uh, let me unlock and see if the rate can be equal yes because you want to be as fair as you possibly can be All right this is loss 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 win-win right so for me in order for me to take a sell trade from this trend i want to place another uh sell stop below here and my stop loss will be inside this level right so now let's see how the market continues from here you can see that the market is pushing above sort of a buy trend let's see okay my trade is not open okay my trade is open guys my trade is open the market was struggling to cross below this level was struggling to push above this structure the reason we've seen this lot of stop loss hits is because the market was seeing that we could have caught this trade whenever the market might swing towards the downside it needs to take people out as you can see one two trades are out however we are seeing sales we are seeing sales whatever it won't give us that sell easily because the win might be bigger right the win might be bigger so i'm just going to adjust this to where the market actually opened if you look here closely the market is consolidating it's not pushing up or down it's more of a consolidation it's a rectangle shape that we spoke about it's more of a consolidation when you see consolidation the market might be taking out traders before pushing below you can see here the market was just pushing and taking out traders so let's see if our trade end up with a profit or a loss because if we profit here we would have made up for these three losses looks like we actually profited from this trade guys and we came out victorious as you guys can see we are taking trades and we are coming out victorious we are now in profit one two three in profit only small losses our wins are more than our losses we are back in track we are back in profit as you guys can see manipulations are playing a role we can see here this rectangle place was playing more of a consolidation the market knew that we are trying to sell because of this strong sell trend and we had two stop loss hands one two three stop loss hands guys so these stop loss hands are of course a form of manipulations that happen in the market let's see if i go to one now you can see them properly um hope you guys can see how this market is operating and so on and so forth so so far at this moment 
uh let's see if the market can respect this level here that we have before we can continue with our possible trade so i'm gonna adjust this to to the left so that we can have clearer charts right it's time moment guys we are doing great we are doing great we are in profits let's see what the market can give us before we can continue from here can see that the market is failing at this level possible possible double bottom possible double bottom here guys i'm seeing possible double bottom here possibility that there is one two possible double bottom guys a break above for me will indicate a buy a break below will indicate a sell a break below might indicate a sell, a big above might indicate a buy. Let's see how the market plays out. As you guys can see, guys, the market is trying to break above here. So I'm just gonna put it like this. Seeing this is a very weird setup, let me just try to push this here and try to match the bottom with the top as you can see the market broke above guys this is a nice entry for your buy so at this time moment guys i think i would go for a buy here you can see we are seeing sort of a double bottom see possibilities are the market can push above so my take profit will be a bit higher and we're gonna see how that plays out we are in profits but the market is pushing below okay this trade looks promising can i pull it to the side and see how long it will play out so we can get a more clearer view so what i can do here i'm seeing that the market is pushing above i'm seeing this as a touch so i'm seeing this as a possibility of a trend forming right possibilities are there and if i see another trade i might as well take it if i see another trade i might take that trade possible buys possible buys let's see The market is expecting our trend and at this time moment we have created a sort of a ceiling that we crossed above so if possible we might go for another buy if possible if possible another buy from here across below into this region will indicate uh, a drop for me so let me just lock this one and try to also push this above so that it hits this level here and we are out of the trade right out of the trade if it hits that level so i'm gonna lock this one too we have two trades we are scaling in let's see the market played in losses you guys can see we almost thought it's going down you can see guys that's the how the markets operate so i'm gonna just come here and see if we can adjust I can adjust my trend now to actually cater for what the market can do from this point forth. You need to know that guys, for a new week, you're gonna need to start your analysis. So it's basically like a new week for me. So I'm gonna start my analysis. Possibility of the market breaking below is there, but we are still confident in our trade. The first trade is in profit. The second trade is open and it's in losses let's see how it continues you can see here the market almost get us to push below this is just more of a stop loss hunt if i was in this trade alone the biggest drawdown is acting to be a possibility of a big win you can see this is a drawdown this first trade is in profit the second trade is was in losses and now we are both in profits let's see how the market continues from here the market is approaching my stop guys i am worried the second trade might have been a bad idea 
might have been a bad idea. Let's see. The second trade hit my stop loss guy. The second trade was a bad idea. It took me out. It took me out. The second trade took me out with a loss. Let me unlock it. Let me unlock it. It took me out with a loss. And it might continue taking me out with the next trade as well. But we are still confident with the first trade. We'll let it continue to see how the market plays out. The market is failing to push below. The market is failing to push below. So it's forming a new trend, guys. Guess our trend was sort of incorrect. It wasn't incorrect per se. I would say it's more of two trends, guys. I'm seeing two trends here. This is also market tricks. I'm seeing this as two trends, guys. That trend was valid, but the market due to consolidation, when the market consolidates a lot, it changes direction. You can see here, we have a very weird setup. We have a very weird setup. I don't know if you guys know the setup, but it's a very weird setup, right? Comes with experience, guys. But this, for me, was a trend that is inside this trend, as you guys can see. So for this one, we took a loss. It's okay. Let me just adjust it to here. So that it can be small. It's a loss here, you can see. But the first trade is in profit. So if we win, we win big because it's here. You see, we win big. But now, I'm going to take another trade from here because I'm seeing that the market came and played inside the trend and went below as a stop loss hunt but now it's coming back it's forming us this main trend so i'm going to turn this into a different color guys so that i don't confuse you and maybe i can explain what i'm saying this is a market trick guys it's a market trick i hope you guys understand this trick and you've learned something from this trading session you can see that the market would have pushed up however it formed a trend in trend you see we can have a trend here and we have another trend below so at this point here i'm seeing a possible buy Let's see how the market continues from this point on forth. Take profit hit, guys. Take profit hit. So the take profit from this one hit, the take profit from this one hit. So overall, we won one, two, three, four, five trades. We lost one, two, three and four however our wins are more than our losses you can see this is a big win this is also a big win this is a huge win and this is a big win too and yeah this was a stop loss hunt with futures a loss and this is a win too so overall guys it was a nice trading session hope you guys learned a thing or two in terms of trades this was more of focusing a lot on entries than analysis because I'm just showing you guys, even though you can analyze, you have to understand how the market operates. There's a lot of things that come into play when you enter trades. There's a lot of tricks that the market does. You can see we came from here. A lot of trades, a lot of experiences. These things are possible. When you see such, you can have a buy stop and continue with the trade. However, when you get to continue trading, you're going to see and get to learn a lot about this trick, guys. That you're gonna get to see that when you actually have a real trading experience you're gonna have losses and wins however overall you profit as you have the edge of what the market is actually doing when you're losing the market can be taking out traders or you could be wrong however as long as you have an edge you're gonna come out victorious this is your mentor fs gold signing out hi there everyone this is FX Gojo Mentors, and in this lesson, we're going to be covering FX Gold Mastery of Entries Part 2. Yes, we are going to be looking at pure price action. So, in this lesson, guys, make sure that you actually take out your pen and paper and make sure that you take careful notes as we are about to break down how the market actually operates. Do understand that this is the most and last important chapter that you need in order to help you find good entry points. We believe that once you get to understand how the market operates, it will help you a lot and go a long way in helping you spot good entries. So let's continue with the video. How to use price action, the FX code approach. These are the key points that are going to be covered in this lesson. Which time frame to use support and resistance trend lines? Difference between key chart levels and support and resistance. How different time frame price action correlates? 
entries below one hour time frame, entries above one hour time frame, and FS good patterns explained in detail. Now the breakdown of the lesson has already been completed. Let's continue to achieve all these objectives. Which time frame to use support and resistance trend lines? You're gonna use your support and resistance trend lines on any time frame, meaning that it doesn't restrict you to any time frame. Point number two: higher time frames shows long-term support and resistance. Smaller time frames show immediate support and resistance. Now, lastly, to properly identify support and resistance, find areas where the market usually changes direction as that's where the market is most likely to change direction again. Now, let me illustrate what I mean by that. Let's say at this time and moment, guys, we are basically looking at how the market is operating. The market might begin by giving us a push towards the downside. You can see this by such moves and the market is now moving and ranging like so. So what I'm about to give you guys is a clear overview of how to spot the difference between the two and giving you an overview also on how the market might act and operate, right? So the market is now moving like so. As you can see, we're seeing a push towards the upside. We're seeing more of a double top there and the market is coming back and ranging towards the downside. Now, for you to understand different time frames and how to apply support and resistance lines is to know how you're going to apply them. So let's say now, at this time moment here, we do have a very strong support zone here. The market is, of course, failing to push below the structure. So we know that it's a very strong support zone. However, it's a big area, meaning that this is going to be a support from a higher time frame. Secondly, guys, if you come here, you can see that we do have some support on this line here, but they're in a smaller time frame. And they can even go to as little as spotting them at this point here. So knowing how to effectively apply this can help you spot entries. As long as you can see the market coming back to retest your support, that can also trigger you to knowing that the market might give you some reversals. As you can see, this was the first touch, second touch indicating that reversal. We can see the market has been reversing at this point here, which can help us and go a long way in spotting where to enter and exit. Now let's continue with the lesson. Difference between key chart levels and support and resistance. You have to know that guys, key chart levels are important technical levels that create possible reversals. Traders look out for key chart levels to place their buy and sell orders around those lines. Either market execution, stop orders or setting limits. Those are the three types of entries you can make when you trade the forex market. Now, key chart levels can be used even during choppy weeks as the market ranges only. As a scalper, you might stand a chance when you use key chart levels because you're going to be able to identify those levels where the market is going to be reversing even in smaller time frames. Now, as we've taught you, the market is not always trending. In fact, it's often said that the market spends more time consolidating and moving sideways than they do in trending conditions. What that means is that the market spends more time consolidating than it does trending. Luckily, with the knowledge of how to trade simple price action setups from key levels, we can try to also effectively trade choppy markets as well. You have to know that, guys, if you're going to take any trade during choppy markets, you have to apply high proper risk management, meaning that you have to use small lot size and make sure you minimize risk as much as possible. You can trade swing levels. A swing point does not need to be confirmed by multiple rejections of price in order to be considered a valid support or resistance levels. So now I'm going to illustrate what I meant by key chart levels. So let's say that the market is starting with a very strong bearish momentum. You can see that the market is now in a very strong bearish momentum. It's giving us those push towards the downside. And before it reverses, we can see some part of a double bottom and a push towards the upside and a retest. And the market starts to range like so. So, 
what we can see here guys is a few chart levels you're gonna see a difference between key chart levels and support and resistance so if i come here i can see that the market has a very strong key chart level here you can see that we can see it by a swing point you can see this another key chart level here and you can see this is yet another key chart level you can see the key chart level with these two touches here right you can see another key chart level here you can see another key chart level here right just try to spot those key chart levels guys it's more of applying the fs gold high and low strategy what you need to do you need to spot the key chart levels those levels where the market reverses right because once you get to a point where you actually can execute the key chart levels it means that you can execute good trades so what we use these key chart levels for is to identify those strong market moves you can see the market came and tested this level making it more of a swing low for this time and moment and it came back crossed below creating a small low coming back and touching that line knowing that now it was acting as a support it came back and acted as a resistance the market further continues breaks below the previous support comes back pushes back up and retested as a resistance so you can see those key chart levels here would have given us two good entries you can see those chart levels guys is more of a level that respected in the market it's not more of a zone but levels that the market rejected price upon you can see at this price the market is rejecting so you can see the key chart levels also goes hand in hand is understanding those key levels those price areas where the market is rejecting and the thing about understanding how this operates is that key chart levels can also just be created by a simple line your market can hit a high creating a swing high so from there, we know that we're going to sell for the longest time and the market has created a high for us, meaning that the possibilities are it can continue trading and come back in the future. But we know at this level, the market usually reverses. We have a key chart level at that point. So we know should the market continue that level, we're going to look for possible reversals towards the downside. I hope you understand how to effectively apply this. Now let's continue with the video. Difference between key chart levels and support and resistance so how to do that you should think of support and resistance more of zones rather than concrete numbers or lines support and resistance consist of key chart levels however they also cater for supply and demand meaning that when you use support and resistance lines guys you have to cover more of a zone than a strict line support and resistances actually help us a lot to know where the market will reverse and can also be used by supply and demand meaning that you can use it to see when the market is overbought and when the market is oversold support and resistance areas can help us know how far the market is retesting eg surplus of buyers can make a fake out but you can really cater for it with a resistance zone i'm going to effectively show you this as well in an illustration so support and resistance zones are usually presented by the candlestick shadows you're going to see that once we know how to effectively apply the zones they're going to be shown most of the time by candlestick shadows by spikes towards the downside so try to also use line charts when analyzing to properly identify the market moves you're going to see that sometimes when you use line charts you're going to remove most of the noise from the market as we've seen with the previous lessons we also try to advise you to also switch to line charts and come back to candlesticks as you also need to see how the market is operating now these highs and lows can be misleading because oftentimes they are just spikes from market reactions as i've said guys some of these market moves you're going to be seeing them on your analysis but at the end of the day they can be just simple market reactions that amount to no further information now let me show you what i mean by that in an illustration let's say for example the market is ranging like so How a support and resistance works is more of a zone. 
we can see here guys that the market is in a zone we can see the market is not hitting the same price see at this point here guys the market is not hitting at the same price however we're gonna put it in a zone instead so the difference between a key chart level and a zone the market is at sort of different lines you can see the line here and here and here all of them are in a support right so in this area we can say that the market is over so when the market comes in this area it is oversold and you can see the push towards the upside you can see it's not an actual straight line the lines are on different levels however in this zone we know that the market has oversold and we expect the push towards the upside so the difference between chart levels and support and resistance zones is to know that where the market is overbought and oversold the areas for expected market reversals are going to be more than just a line but an area instead lastly i want to show you how we can effectively spot this one So what I want to show you here is that this is also a zone, guys. This is also a zone. Even though the market is spiking, it's creating some spikes or shadows. Don't let them mislead you. This is still a sell, right? This here is still a buy. So what we mean by that, guys, is don't let the market shadows to fool you. We are calling this a zone as well. This is a very strong buy zone. We can have normal spikes that the market might be rejecting before giving us the overall direction. As you can see as well here, we do have those Yang shadows the market might be rejecting, especially on high time frames as well, where the market is giving us the overall change of direction. You can see those overall change of direction came with market spikes and some even spiked outside our zones. However, we know in the zone the market reverses. So we use these zones to indicate market reversals. So without any further waste of time, let's continue with the lesson. Entries below one hour time frame. Now, looking for entries, you must enter upon a break of a trend, a continuation of a trend. It can be a smaller time frame or a bigger time frame. Or when you spot market weaknesses, you're going to see that basically having such rules for your entries is making sure that you only enter after confirmation. The reason we're having these three rules is because we teach you guys to learn that when you take a trade is when you're seeing a confirmation of an entry. When you're seeing a confirmation of an entry, you take that trade. You're going to see also when we cover the practical side on how the market actually moves, you're going to see a lot of market weaknesses as some of them, they can present to you entry confirmation. When the market shows signs of weakness, we can see it as an entry confirmation and enter upon those market reactions now when you can find any entries you can go as far as one minute or 15 minutes chart that's when you are trading below one hour time frame smaller time frames are often used for entries if you can see anything and then you're looking for an entry point you can go to a smaller time frame and see what the market is showing at its earliest forms when you can find any entries make sure that you try to analyze and use pending orders to wait for the market to give you more direction or market movement the reason sometimes you have to wait the market won't give you entries all the time the market may give you good market moves but it doesn't mean that you have an entry point you have to understand the difference guys there's finding good entries you need to focus on finding good entries your ability to spot them will improve you're gonna see on how we identify all these entry points on the next video which is going to be the practical side of entries Number two, entries above one hour time frame. Looking for entries, you must enter upon a break of a trend, a continuation of a trend. It can be a smaller time frame and a big time frame or when you spot market weaknesses. This is also above one hour time frame, guys. We can also continue with the continuation of a trend. You can also enter upon a break of a trend line and when we spot market weaknesses. Market weaknesses is just as I explained previously. Now, when you can find any entries on bigger time frames, you can go as far as 15 minutes or 30 minutes chart. Small time frames are often used for entries. So when you can find any entries above one hour time frame, you can also go to smaller time frames, basically less 15 minutes or 30 minutes charts. When you can find the entries, like we've said before, try to analyze and use pending orders to wait for the market to give you more direction 
or market. The reason is when you wait for the market to give you more direction and you have your pending orders and the market comes and opens your order, it's most likely that the market is respecting your setup. So you need to make sure you actually invest more in such trades. Now, should you analyze and set pending orders later when you come back to your charts and you find that the market played out as you predicted? This means that that particular trading pair or instrument respects your setup. Let me quickly illustrate what I mean by what I said. I'm not going to cover a lot here. I'm just going to cover things I want to touch on quickly as most of them are going to be covered as well on the practical side of the market analysis. So what I want to show you here, guys, is those young small tricks. So what I'm starting is here. It's a break of a trend. As I show you guys, what you need is an anti confirmation. At this point, the market is still in a bearish moment. So once we break above, we can see this as a confirmation of going for a buy. We can enter upon a break of a trend after a retest. We can go for a buy. Also, when the market comes here, it starts playing inside this trend. And we are at this moment, we are looking for buying opportunities. We can enter a buy opportunity as we are still in a continuation of a trend. Once the market breaks to each side, we can continue with where the market is going. Also as well, this can be done in bigger time frames as well. It can be bigger time frames. We know when the market comes at this point, we are looking for reversals. The market might come, give us some spikes first, give us some retest and continue with the push towards the upside before actually giving us that push towards the downside once again, giving us that entry and continuing on a bigger time frame. Lastly, upon market weaknesses, you're going to see some of the tricks I would like to use is when we understand how the market operates by giving us that break outside. Once we break upside our bullish move, we can expect the market to shoot down and reverse from here. This is a trick that you're going to be able to see. We like to use it to actually spot reversals as it doesn't always work all the time, but it works more times than it doesn't. So you're going to see this also signs of weakness when we see the market continue from here. We can also enter upon this level and continue and close and continue with the reversal as well. This is just a weakness that the market likes to show most often. Without any further waste of time, let's continue with the lesson. FS Good Patterns Explained in Detail Being capable of identifying trends is one of the most core skills a forex trader should possess as it can prove to be highly useful in making forex market predictions. You're going to see that guys, trends play a huge role in the market. The trend is the general direction of a market. Whether you apply trends or not, they are there and they are the most highly effective tools ever used to analyze the market. You're going to see when we analyze guys, how effective trends are. Now, trends may vary in length from short to medium or to long term. Being able to identify a trend can prove to be highly profitable. And the reason is that you'll be able to trade with the trend. Also know that only in rare occasions, the market will form trends that goes through the market. And these trends carry high probability trades. I'll show you what I mean by this in an illustration. In a context of any strategy, it is best to trade with trends. Like I've been saying, guys, you have to understand FS Code patterns. All our strategies, at the end of the day, they come from mastering trends. The only last thing you need to know is be able to understand sessions when the market closes, when the market opens. But as long as you have trends, any instruments that can be added on top of that will help you better time your entries. Now, let me show you what I mean by some illustrations. So basically, what we mean by what we've been saying, we're going to start with trends that go through the market. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say this time moment... We have a trend here and we have another trend here. We have a trend line and we have another trend line below. You can see that the market is in a trending format. It's now going for a bullish momentum. The market then breaks below, comes back and shoots back up. It's this bottom, shoots back up. And you can see that there's something happening here. As you guys can see, or we can see here, you can see that we have another trend as well. You guys can see this trend is going through the market. I don't usually like to trade like this. However, don't misuse this. This only happens in rare occasions. This is more of a confirmation of an entry for us. When you see the market forming this kind of action, you can expect the market to know that we're in this trend. It came back, it played another trend. 
this side is more of a stop loss hunt we call it a more of a stop loss hunt as you understand how the market moves the market is moving in this region comes back to this region to get the momentum to actually finish the top it hit the top of a trend it will come to retest the bottom and it will come back to hit the top so at this point here we can even go with an increased loss size you're gonna see that there's different types of trades there's low probability there's medium probability and there's high probability at this point we call it high probability as you think the market actually should and complete this in the fastest form this is high probability for us we take this trade with an increased loss size it can be from 0 0.10 to 0 0.15 we increase the loss size just a little bit as it's more of a high probability to us the other remaining ones are going to be shown on the practical side of the market i just want to show you what we mean by these rare occasions why should we keep an eye on volatility market volatility can be described as an actively moving market during this period, ending potential for traders can be huge when anticipating market volatility. As you guys have seen, we're also going to cover sessions later in the future as they can also help us understand how effective volatility is. We can make more money when the market is more volatile as we're seeing more moves from the market. Market volatility is the frequency and the severity of the price movement of any trading instrument. Volatility happens in the market when there's an imbalance of traders going in one direction. E.g., 95% of traders going long with just 5% of traders going short. What I mean by that is when there's less people selling, when there's more people buying, the market shoots more in the direction of a bullish momentum as that creates a lot of volatility. The main cause of volatility is market sentiment. If traders can see a buy or a sell trend begin, more traders will follow and it's creating a snowball effect when we have more traders following that direction we can have more of a market volatility and the market will then give us a bigger push towards that direction right due to market volatility we have a bull and a bear volatile market this will be explained further in this video so what we mean by what we've been discussing guys is understanding volatility as you guys have been seeing that As you can see, guys, the market here spent more time consolidating than it does when it's volatile. Those volatile moves is where we earn most of our money than when it's consolidating. Here, the market is moving slow. It's just choppy a bit, normal market moves. But once we are out of those normal market moves, you can see some bull volatile. When you see the market is pushing up like this, we call it a bull volatile. And when it's pushing down in the fastest, we call it a bear volatile you can see where you can also identify when this is happening you can make most of your money because you're going to make the biggest moves in the shortest period so the market spends more time consolidating and making slow moves than it does giving us those volatile moves but with those volatile moves it's when we end most than when the market is not volatile now let's continue with the video as we've been saying guys bear and bull volatile markets often happens after manipulations as you guys can see i said that they happen after consolidation they often indicate an end of market consolidation or choppy markets a strong bullish market after a long consolidating bearish market i'm going to show you as well in illustration in a bull volatile market look for a pullback a reversal and then find a logical profit objective on the long side you're going to see what i mean by that you want to consider dropping to a lower time frame to improve risk or ratio reward upon your entry for you to have an entry on a bear or bull volatile market you need to go to smaller time frame to make sure you're entering after some retests not when the market might reverse with you now a bear volatile market is the opposite of a bull volatile market it's when the market is shooting down rather than when it's shooting up you can trade the bear and bull volatile market by execution or sending pending orders you have to patiently wait for the market however volatile markets are also risky trade them with caution as you guys seen the market moves fast the market can also move fast towards the downside and then reverse quickly as well towards the upside and start pushing in that direction you have to know that bear and bull volatile markets are also risky as the market moves very fast as you can be too slow to actually comprehend the speed the market moves in now this is because the market won't allow you to win every time 
those volatile movements may come in spikes, may come in rejection on both areas. You can push towards upside, come back and push towards downside quickly in four, three times just to confuse you. They happen when there's news around, they happen when there's a lot of volatility or when there's a lot of traders going one direction. So the market can also make sure that you lose. You can catch all these trades. However, when you do, you're going to profit a lot. View losses as cause of running business. On the topic of losses, why do all traders go through losses will be covered in the next slide. But before we do that, let me show what I mean by bear volatile markets often happen after manipulations. We can see that the market has been ranging like so. The market has been ranging for the longest time. Right. The market might be ranging like this and start shooting towards the downside. The market might be indicating to us that the break towards the upside might be coming. You can see this by some few moves. The market is creating a new trend here. Started from this trend. The market has been consolidating. Here's a point of area of confusion. The market can back up, push down. This is just creating some moves until the market shoots up quickly. Comes back, make two small moves, consolidates a bit, comes back, retests creates a kitchen level area, comes back and kisses one more time and starts shooting down, coming back down, shoots back, rejects, rejects, shut. As you can see, these are market moves. The market can do that as well. The market can consolidate. Let's say for example here, when we analyze from a higher time frame, we're looking for a buy. The market did not buy immediately. It started showing us like it's going down. It started to fool us, but we saw that the market is rejecting. The market is failing to push below once it stops failing it starts coming with so much power so much strength towards the upside you can set a buy stop it opens your buy stop and profits you're quick you have to know where you're gonna get out you can get out when you're here after the market comes back reverses creates for us a very strong key level area there comes back and rejects and you can see a very strong resistance area at that point and comes back retests below it comes back comes to kiss that last time our key chart level area we can see the key chart level area also helps to see a continuation of a bare volatile market giving us a last confirmation towards the downside the market is shooting once again and we can see the push towards the downside you can see this can be a choppy week you can identify this as a choppy week and we can define this as a trending week as well you can see most of the time when we're out of manipulations we're going to see a lot of volatile market movement as long as you understand how the market operates guys you're gonna be able to know on how to react when such things happen now we are covering the most and last important slide of this entire lesson why do all traders go through losses i hear people saying that when they trade they don't want to go through losses well i hate to break it to you but losses are important losses are part of the journey losses are part of the process when it comes to losses, no matter how big or small, losses remind us to never stop learning. Yes, you must respect the market, but don't fear the market. As you're going to see, guys, when we actually take the practical approach, when we trade, we should respect the market, but we should not fear the market. The market can come to you and give you a buy setup, right? Let me just go to some illustrations. Let me show what I mean by that. The market can come to you. The market can be on a bearish momentum and then break our trend and give you a nice buy. You see this is a nice buy confirmation. You're in a buy trend. You want to go for a bullish momentum. Continues. However, we are failing to push. It comes back. We are failing to push. We are failing to push. The market is now telling you that there's a very strong resistance here. Don't fight the market. The market gave you a buy. That is true. The market came and gave you a buy. You wanted the buy to complete that reversal triangle strategy of ours towards the upside before looking for a push towards the downside. You wanted to see that push. However, the market is rejecting here. Don't force. It means that it's been consolidating for the longest. We are now expecting a push towards the downside. The market is rejecting, guys. Even though we want the market to push up, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't take what the market is giving us. We can see the market is giving you an entry. Even though we want this to happen, don't fight the market respect the market right let it push up even though you're gonna lose this trade doesn't mean you should fear the market take what the market gives you let the market lead you even though we saw that entry of a buy there the market came back and gave us another entry of a sell don't force direction even if it can give you a buy and later comes and give you a sell take the sell but wait to see the confirmation it gave us a lot of touches to see now the market is going for a sell our first analysis has been invalidated by this structure here 
we're gonna go for SL and push towards the downside. I hope you guys can understand on how we can also transact from having one trade, having some consolidation that might give us more time, market failing to push above and changing the setup due to consolidation. You can see the setup is now different, it's no longer the same. The setup is now a sell setup, so we're going for a sell. So when you reach our professional level of trading, you'll get to understand why we work very hard to always sharpen our skills by regularly trading the forex market. As a trader, you need to trade more often. As you know, guys, football players, they always practice. Those people who are playing rugby, they always practice. People who are playing football, they always practice. People who are playing tennis, they always practice. Singers are always singing. Dancers are always dancing because they want to improve their skills. If you want to improve your skills, then work on your skills. Work on perfecting your craft. If you love your craft, keep on sharpening it. Your blade will not be strong if you don't continue sharpening it. Continue sharpening it, it's going to be at the most highest performance of its peak. So, even when you reach a consistently profitable level, you will still go through losses. Yes, overall, we win. However, the first thing to get right is the mindset. No one has a 100% win rate. Trading is not about hitting take profits only, but it's also about hitting stop losses. Stop losses are lessons. They are reminders that you are not the king. Know that when you win, let's say you have a very great week, you hit 100% hit rate. Those wins, they can go through your head. Those wins can make you feel like you're a god. Don't let them do that to you because now you are failing. You are failing to let the market lead you because you are a god. You think you lead the market. The mindset is wrong. You are not the god. You only follow what the market gives you because once you feel like you're a god, you're going to lose a lot. You're going to force direction upon the market. You're going to want the market to do what you want it to do and not what it's presenting to you. Only take what the market presents not what you want because you're going to see when you win your wins are going to go through your head however when you lose those losses will go straight to your heart you see so don't let the losses also take you over as much as don't let those wins also take you over always stay neutral don't be too hard on yourself when you take a loss it's part of the process as you say guys a loss goes straight to the heart don't take it too personal it's the market the market moves as it should the market can try to disrespect all kind of setups that is known as a choppy week. When you experience a choppy week, just step aside, go to a demo if you may, or take some space from trading and get to a point where you're getting better yourself. When you go back to the market, you come as a refreshed person and you check if the market is out of some consolidations and you can continue with the normal movements. When the market is making sure that you lose a lot, take a break. Don't let it consume you. So the last line, don't ever give up. Only you have the power. Get up and go get it. You guys are part of the winning team. Make sure you actually practice what we teach you. Right now, we're about to cover the practical side of Master of Entries Part 2. Stay tuned. See you on the next video.